Ho, ho, ho! Merry Flossmas, everyone! Welcome! My name is Jessie, and this is my channel, Bobo Jessie Stitches. And today is Flossmas number 7, because today is December 7. How's everyone doing? Everyone doing okay? I'd like to acknowledge that for those of us in the United States, that today is Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. Um, it's the day that, obviously, that Pearl Harbor was attacked that ultimately led to the Americans entering World War II and um, it's always worth remembering. It's always worth noting that, you know, it wasn't so long ago that, that we were fighting Nazis and, you know, and I know it's a cliche to talk about like freedom isn't free and all that kind of stuff, but, you know, it takes a lot of effort to make sure that authoritarianism doesn't rise and and um, in general. And so, you know, for what that's worth in this season of good tidings, <laughs> um, you know, let's all remember that, you know, protecting each other is important, um, whether or not it impacts you. And I think that's always really hard. I think it's, and I don't think it's from people who want to be apathetic. I don't think, I don't think that's the case. It's very, very easy to be in your life every day and living the best life that you can have, right? Or struggling in your own struggles, you know, in, in all, in all its forms. And, you know, and, and sometimes it can be really difficult to think about how other people are struggling when it's not the same as you. I have a friend who always says you sit, you see from where you sit. So your experiences are what your experiences are. And, and you're like, well, my life is X, whatever, right? In terms of difficulties and, and you know, why why do you think that your life is worse? It's not saying that, like, if someone's life is better or worse, but there are some people who have authoritarianism and systematic authoritarianisms, sometimes built intentionally to be such, and sometimes it's unintentional, unintended consequences of creating systems intended to solve a problem but creating another problem that has disparate impact on certain individuals. Um, and obviously in World War II under Germany, it was intentional. That was intentional attacks on um, the Jewish people as well as others, right? Like, you know, sometimes it is forgotten that there was also um, people who are Romani, um, dissidents, those who were LGBTQIA+, as we know it now, but back then anyone that would be viewed as queer um, in the negative connotation that was used back then. And so it's, you know, there were there was a lot of othering um, and, and leading to a lot of death and genocide. And so even though Pearl Harbor is a recognition of the attack by the Japanese Empire and the United States, World War II was a fight against authoritarianism. Anyways, that's some deep thoughts for Flossmas. I promise we'll get fun. All right, well, you're here for stitching, not a lecture on being nice to people. Although hopefully y'all are being nice to people and wanting to be good allies. If not, I don't know why you're watching me. I'm drinking the tea on that one. All right, this is some tea, y'all. When I opened that box, oh, I wish I could... I wish I recorded the audio now because I don't record the audio when I'm opening because it's just a lot of noise and like paper noises and stuff like that, right? So I don't I don't record the audio, but this one you would have heard me do like an audible like whoa like when I open up the box I could smell the chocolate. So the flavor today is hazelnut rocher, rocher, a hazelnut and chocolate black tea with a splash of gold. And the ingredients are Sri Lankan black tea, cocoa nibs, caramelized hazelnut, cocoa shells, sprinkles glazing agent, and then stabilizers, anti-caking agent, and natural flavoring. And this one does connect, contain nuts, because hazelnuts. Um, but woo, yeah, that's I could smell that chocolate when I opened it. I anticipated a sweet one, so I made my plate a little less... Um, oh, I didn't put any olives and stuff like that on there. This is good tea. That's a good tea. I should let you know that anytime I like a milk tea, I, I prefer milk tea. Um, so anytime it says with or without milk in its in its instructions, I always add milk. 
because that's not how I normally would drink a tea if, if it was a tea that you would milk or add milk to. Anyways, let's talk about some stitching. Like my new hat? I got it at a Daiso, that Japanese dollar store I mentioned a couple of days ago. Isn't that just silly? I think I might go get a couple more so that way I can give you some variety for the rest of the Flossmas. I think he's so cute. He was the last one. I got the last one with this guy. Anyways, all right, so let's open up some things. I was all prepared. I guess I made stacks and just piled stacks on top of things. All right, let's start with Black Needle Society, a nice list. And today is number seven. This is solid, y'all. Like, I'm not going to try to bend it because my store the other day. So here's number seven. are cards there's going to be a glare because i'm not going to open it so you can see that so it's inside cellophane wrapping it's um so it says made with love it's um got silver design on it of two doves and pans and some flowers those look like they're envelopes so without opening it let's do some scratching off you know, we're only on day seven, and my, and my pile over here is already starting to get a little bit ridiculous. Which means it's time to clean. But I already kind of recorded this in a little bit of my step-by-step -step process of doing my craft room makeover. I am a visual organizer. I like being able to see things. So I have a tendency not to put things away until I know what I want to do with them or where I want to put them away so that way, because anything that's out of sight is out of mind for me. So, uh, Made with Love card set by MS Point. Gifting handmade items this year. Let them know it was made with love with one of these cards. Oh, that's super nice. Yeah, it looks like there's five cards in there. Two, three, four, five. Yeah. And I'm sure they're blank on the inside. How nice. That's a nice, that's a nice gift. All right. Okay. Next up is gonna be forbidden fiber coats um uh, yule ball mystery sal um is is what it is we're now on an even I mean, we're on an odd day that's gonna be a thing the entire time isn't it where i'm gonna get even and odd messed up today is an odd day so we're getting a gift so today's number seven crinkly noises I think you should always assume that if you're in a unboxing video, there's going to be crinkly noises. Not be judgy, but I assume you know there's going to be crinkly noises. All right, number seven is a corner gauge. Okay, we absolutely adore these corner gauges made by our friend Anne at Twin Mommy Creations. It's a perfect tool to measure the distance in the corner of your fabric to start your project. Oh, how lovely. Um, so... There it is, but let me get a back. Let's see, will the white help? I don't know if the white background will help. Can you see? So it's acrylic, and obviously it's a gauge, and it says 2021 Yule Ball. So, yeah. Lovely. I like good tools. I like having tools that you can use. And then it's got an inch, inch and a half, two, two and a half, and then obviously three inches is the outer, outer edge. So... Speaking of Forbidden Fiber Co., I did start working on, oh, <laughs> I'm going to have to forgive this random, oh, here, let me, let me frog it real quick. That might help if I just frogged it real fast. And that way, that's the threads out of the way. So I did start working on that last clue. And it, um, I almost, I almost got to the point where I thought I might be able to finish it, and then, and then it happened. As you heard, the words frog came out. I realized that my count was off, and I started to frog it, and then I thought, no, I did such a good job on this. I want to show you my amazing work, and then, and then frog it if I don't recreate it and then you will have proof at one point in time that I actually was able to to do this well oh I don't think I grabbed the thread I think the thread is still sitting on my couch 
Um, so you can't see the thread on its thread drop. So anyways, but this the color was Saturnella. Um, and it was a beautiful variegated floss. And I'm sorry, I don't have it. So I did stitch on this yesterday. And so I started on this side and I went all the way over and then it, it's, it's obviously some kind of a banner. So I wanted to continue it all the way through. And I was so proud of myself because you see on this side, I was able to get the variegation to be fairly seamless. That's, those are two different sets of threads um, that I start one stop and one start. And I was so proud of myself. I was like, look at that, it's seamless. And now I'm gonna have to frog it. So for those of you who may be working on this, who have not gotten to this part of the fabric, don't make the same mistake I did. Because right here, right here, is a page break. So you see this part of the stitching on page one, you see this part of the stitching on page two. I made the stupid assumption that this was directly across. So I counted out the space between, which was 11 stitches, and I counted it out and I evened up the row. And that is where I started the stitch. And then when I got to this part over here, I was like, and I was confirming that the stitch count was correct it was not so this is actually there's supposed to be three stitches in between this and here and there's four and then I was like well shoot where did I mess up I ended up spending I'm not even kidding at least half an hour recounting every single one of these diamond stitching that I did because I thought surely the mistake is in the diamond stitching because there were so many gaps, like 30 stitches in between and 20 stitches. And I was just like, surely that's where the mistake was. Is that where the mistake was? No, I finally caught it. This is not directly across. The, the one on page two is one stitch up from the one that's on page one. So if you haven't stitched it yet, and you're a person like me who's just gonna make assumptions, making me an ass, then <laughs> um, don't make this mistake. So anyways, I will be able to finish this tonight. It's um, This didn't take me very long to do last night. There are some bits of the same thread around here. So I will go ahead and get that done tonight. And I might have a new start. Why do you think? I'm so why did I not finish this last night, you're asking? Well, for good reasons, I worked on Laurel Witch. So before I show you day one Laurel Witch, here is day seven, the pattern. Look at this owl, y'all. What a gift. Can I just say this thing? I don't, I don't think Laura is watching my videos. You are, if you are watching my videos. What an absolute gift. Every single one of these every day are such beautiful intricate patterns right like like these are design patterns that are like I'm not saying that the designers when they do freebies don't give us like beautiful designs because they do right I mean they're always so I think designers are so incredibly generous with what they do for us but to do 25 of these all in a row I love it I love it I'm just sad it's going to take me forever to to do it because at this rate it's probably going to be September before I finish all the months. But with that, I'm happy to report I have a finish of day one. <laughs> so here's my day one of the of the advent of the Merry Witchmas advent. Um, everything is called for doing this two over two um, DMC on 32 count flax linen by Zweigart. That little, those little windows in the house right here were such a pain in the ass. I don't, I intentionally did the white last because I hate stitching in white even on a, on a beige. But doing those quarter stitches was not fun when there's so much black, when everything was around it, it was stitched too. Anyways, I had a lot of fun doing that. It took me five days. I, there was one day I didn't stitch on it. But you know, I didn't do like tons of time on it, so. Anyways, we're already at 15 minutes more running late because I was babbling about being nice to people. Um, all right, what's next? What's next? I think I 
is everything I really want to talk about. So Flossmas creator, content creators. Um, I wanted to shout out Lynn X Stitches. She just, she commented on my video and, and then she told me she was doing a Flossmas. I went and watched it. I watched day, whatever day she posted last night. So it looks like she's doing a, um, she's also doing the Black Needle Society's nice list. And then she has some other fun little things like little bear things. And her husband is also giving her um, a, a, an advent gift every day. And she seems to be a pretty big Snoopy Peanuts fan. And well, you can't go wrong with a Peanuts fan, right? So, um, but she's new to me. Um, so go check her out because she may be new to you. So for Linux stitches. And um, yeah, I have one more thing I wanted to talk about, but this video is getting long. So I'm going to save that for tomorrow. So uh, joy of December. What's a joyful thing? This one's actually not a joy for December only, right? But I think that one of the best things around holidays or anything really is family traditions and right around holidays particularly in the end of the year season there's so many family traditions and cultural decision um, traditions and and everything and I just think that that's awesome right and um, so for example my husband is his family is Polish and on Christmas Eve they do what they basically call the great potato fest where it's like potato leek soup pierogies potato pancakes and there's some like you know fish things too um like it's like pickled fish so it's kind of like it's like pickled herring I want to I want to say but um if you like it my apologies but it's not my favorite and uh and and so I love like all these various family traditions and you know I'm trying to think back to if my family did anything in particular that was very traditional around the Christmas time and, and I don't really think so, but my dad's birthday is in December. So I always remember us making a big to do about December. Um, and you know, but there, there definitely was traditions around Halloween, which is probably why my favorite hol holiday of the year is Halloween. Um, during the summers, we would go to, there was this thing that we did for the 4th of July here in the United States. And, um, but over Christmas, like you know, I guess some of the traditions that I've really picked up are the ones from my husband. You know, they do Christmas Eve services. And so we go to church and they go to a camp, you know, and there's like silent night with the candles, which I think is just so lovely. And um, of course, then we eat a lot of potatoes. <laughs> um, I also like things that happen in the cities where there's, you know, you have carolers and, you know, every year, you know, you're going to go hear Handel's Messiah, which is fantastic. And, you know, like all that kind of stuff. So wherever you are, I hope you're having at this point in time, some really great family traditions that you're incorporating or not even family traditions, new traditions, make new traditions. You know, uh, my husband and I, we, we started a new tradition for his family. Um, we saw that in Iceland. So we are, we've appropriated someone else's culture for this, but we like to believe we came by it honestly. So he and I are both, we're both readers. Now he's a big reader compared to me. I read about 20 to 25 books in a year, which I used to think was a lot, but he reads like 100, 125 books a year. He reads very quickly. Um, and um, and so, so we had read somewhere that in Iceland, that it was an Icelandic tradition to give a book and um, on Christmas Eve and to drink hot chocolate. And we were like, we are down with that. I mean, I'm for the hot chocolate. He wasn't so much. But, and so we started about, you know, four or five years ago, the family tradition where we buy a book for everybody and we open up that gift on Christmas Eve so that people can start reading a book. And so, uh, so even new traditions, I hope no one in Iceland is mad that anyone picked up their tradition. Uh, you know, if I need to go make a donation to the Iceland something, let me know. <laughs> Um, but I, I, I like to believe that people are always willing to share their joy. Um, and, and I give full credit to Iceland for, for this, um, wonderful tradition. Anyways, 20 minute video. It's long. Um, and, um, sorry, but wherever you are, I hope you're having joyful stitching. Take care, everyone.